Here's a bit more about differentials. I want to remind you where we got to in class. Real briefly, we have some function, and we're looking at its graph, y equals f of x. And we want to imagine that we understand the function at some point, usually called a, although that tends to change a little bit when we look at the, how the notation works. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and we actually want to figure out the value of the function, ideally, at this other point x. And I talked about how the slight shift in perspective here is to focus not so much on the value f of x or the value f of a, but the difference in those heights. And that's delta y, a change in y value. So that's f of x minus f of a. And the problem is that that's going to be hard in general to calculate. And it might be easier sometimes to try to get the tangent line approximation to that change. We're going to call that dy. And there's a really great reason for that. Because how would you calculate dy? That's how much you're going to rise if you go on the tangent line and you go over a certain amount. You can either call that delta x, because that's a small change in x, or we're just going to use the fact delta and d are the same thing. Delta is a Greek d. We're just going to change it back to an ordinary d. We're going to call that dx, the small change in x. So we put a small change in x into here. It's equal to x minus a. And how much are you going to rise? If you have slope f prime of a, and you have run dx, then you're going to rise by dy. That fits in very well with our notation, because it says that f prime of a is dy over dx. That, didn't used to, that used to be just a purely a notation where dy and dx didn't have an independent meaning. Now, in the context of this problem, dx is going to have the meaning of whatever small change we put in, and di, dy is the idealized approximate change in the function. It's not the actual change. It's the approximate change. So that's where we were. And um, I was considering an example. Um, but let's, first of all, yeah, I was considering an example. Um, it was where f of x is the cube root of 1 minus x. And the linear approximation, got in a homework problem, was 1 minus x over 3. Well, so where did that come from? It came from the fact that f prime of 0, that was the key number, was uh, minus 1 third. It's the slope of that line. That's, we've all often called that m. Um, and that's what's going to go into this calculation here. Okay, so my proposal was, I want to know, suppose I change x from 0 to 0 0.05. So my delta x, I also call that dx, is 0 0.05. I want to predict the approximate change in y, not the actual change, I want to predict the approximate change in y. We call that dy, and dy is f prime of 0 dx. Our base point value is 0. And luckily, we already have calculated that one. So here, dy is just minus 1 third dx. So it says, roughly, if you change your input by a certain amount, the output's going to change by the derivative times that. In other words, minus 1 third times dx. So in this case, dy is minus 1 third times 0 0.05, which is minus 0 0.017, about. Now, I want to go back and um, change the notation just a little bit in a way that's, that's very standard. Here, we were taking the perspective that a was completely fixed. It was some special base point value where we can easily understand the derivative. And there, I was, I was using this particular notation. I take the derivative there, f prime of a. That's the slope. And then that's just a number. And then I multiply that by the small change in x to get the predicted, approximate, idealized change in y, dy. Well, sometimes we want to go back to the more sophisticated perspective, where I want to try to do this at any point. I want to look at the linear approximation there, or there, or there, or there, or there. And so I'm going to want to promote a back to being a variable. And the usual name is x, OK? So more usually, when you see this, this story, it works in this way, OK? And so let me, let me give you an example. Let's say f of x 
is, let's say, 16 over x. And the first thing that, might, that you might be asked to do is find the differential. of this function. So that's a little bit different as opposed to being given a specific a and being given a specific dx and finding a specific dy, it's sort of asking for the master formula for this. But it's really not any different. It's just saying that if dy over dx is f prime of x, then dy is just f prime of x dx. So if you're asked for just straight up the differential as a sort of a master formula, it's just really, 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 really similar to taking the derivative. It is taking the derivative and just putting a dx after it. Literally putting the two letters dx after the derivative. So here, f prime of x is, let's see, that's the derivative of 16x to the minus 1, which is uh, minus 16x to the minus 2, or if you want to put it back in terms of a fraction, minus 16 over x squared. And so that means that the derivative, the differential, sorry, dy, the differential of this function is just that times dx. And this is where people sort of gloss over and get, their eyes glaze over and they say, huh? What's the, what's the point? What, what, what's the point? Um, well, it's easy. That's one thing to remember. You're just taking the derivative and putting a dx after it. And it sets you up for this perspective of how you use the derivative. That's what's really useful about it. It sets you up really nicely for how you would use the derivative to get approximate changes, okay? So, let's say the second step of the problem would be use this to find the, to approximate, let's say, to approximate, um, let's say, um, the change delta y in y equals 16 over x when x changes from x equals 4 to x equals 3. In other words, when delta x, or we also call that dx, is minus 1. So now we're bringing back in the base point that's our starting point, 4, and that's something where this number is really nice. And we're trying to figure out what happens when we, when we change it. Now, this function is so simple, it's really not necessary to approximate delta y. We're really going to be able to get it exactly as well. But that's going to be good because we're going to compare. Okay, So, we take our dy formula, that's minus 16 over x squared dx. We still have the x in here, suggesting a variable because that lets us do a master formula. But now is the time to plug that in, okay? We need to say, okay, our base point value was 4, and then we're changing by delta x or dx is minus 1. So all we have to do is take that formula we got in part 1 and plug in our base point. This is what makes it really streamlined. And plug in the dx value. Minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. And we're done. Now we can check that and do a reality check by looking at, say, the graph of this. 16 over x, uh, 16 over x when x is 4, that's going to give y equals 4. It's going to look like this. And the tangent line, let's do it in red, it's going to look like this. And we're interested in what happens at x equals 3. And our prediction is that roughly this will have gone up by one unit. The dy, the approximate change, turned out to be plus one. Now, we just to finish it off, we calculate the delta y, which is f of three minus f of four. What's the actual change? Sometimes that's going to be impossible or hard to calculate. Here, it's not that bad. It's 16 thirds minus 16 fourths, or um, 16 times four minus three over 12, which is 4 thirds. And that makes sense because it's really, it's curving upward away from the tangent line. So it really me changed a little bit more than one, but it wasn't terribly far off. So that's uh, a lot like problems 27 through 30 in the book, and hopefully that's a good place to stop.